In this final segment on the Spanish century, we will consider in overview the nature and structure of the Spanish Empire in America. We will consider in particular the encomienda system, which reveals the colonial dynamics between the crown, the Spanish conquistadors, and the indigenous populations of the Americas. Let's begin by setting the stage. The Spanish explorers who set sail for the New World were not driven by mere wanderlust. Their primary motivation was economic gain. They harbored dreams of finding mythical cities like El Dorado, laden with gold, to amass fortunes and return to Spain to live as Hidalgos, a word that comes from Hijo de Algo, son of something, a wealthy and influential person. However, reality quickly set in. The absence of readily available wealth they hoped to gain through plunder meant that these adventurers had to resort to other means for profit. They turned to the land and its people. Here, we see the genesis of the encomienda system, a system reminiscent of European feudalism but with distinct characteristics shaped by the context of the New World. Under the encomienda system, the Spanish crown granted colonists, known as encomenderos, the right to extract tribute from the indigenous people, the indios, in exchange for providing protection and religious instruction. In theory, this arrangement was supposed to benefit both parties. However, the harsh truth was that it led to the exploitation and significant decline of the native population due to overwork and diseases introduced by the Europeans. The plight of the Indios did not go unnoticed. A Dominican friar named Bartolomé de las Casas became an outspoken critic of the encomienda system. His seminal work, a short account of the destruction of the Indies, depicted the brutalities inflicted upon the indigenous peoples. Las Casas's writings contributed to the formation of the Black Legend, a narrative that painted the Spanish as ruthless exploiters of the New World. Las Casas pointed to the exploitative nature of the encomienda system as the catalyst for the drastic decline in native populations, but he was only partially correct. In reality, the major catalyst for the decrease in population was the introduction of diseases which the natives had no immunity to. From the point of view of the encomenderos, the fact that the natives were dying had economic repercussions. The encomenderos' only source of income was native labor. If the population was decreasing, so was their prospect of becoming wealthy. For this reason, natives were forced to work essentially to the point of death. So Las Casas was right to be alarmed by the decrease in population. But the natives weren't dying because they were being overworked. They were being overworked because they were dying. In either case, the result was tragically the same. Some native groups, like the Carib, died out altogether. The transition from the rule of conquistadors to the administration by viceroys in the Spanish Empire occurred gradually throughout the 16th century, as the Spanish crown sought to establish more direct control over its vast colonial territories. This shift was part of a broader effort to regulate and systematize the governance of the empire, moving away from the ad hoc and often personal rule of the conquistadors, who had been granted considerable autonomy in the territories they conquered, to a more formal and bureaucratic system under viceroys. These viceroyalties laid the basis for modern Latin American nations. The first viceroyalty established by Spain was the Viceroyalty of New Spain in 1535, which included modern-day Mexico and other parts of North and Central America. The appointment of the first viceroy, Antonio de Mendoza, marked the beginning of this transition. The establishment of the Viceroyalty of Peru followed in 1542, covering territories in South America that had been conquered by the Spanish. These viceroys were appointed by the Spanish king and were responsible for overseeing the administration, justice, defense, and finance of the territories under their jurisdiction, acting as the king's representatives. 
In 1542, King Charles V of Spain issued a landmark set of laws and regulations called the New Laws of the Indies. These were not arbitrary edicts, but were intended to address and rectify the abuses committed against the indigenous peoples of the Americas, especially within the exploitative encomienda system. The advocacy and reports of individuals like Bartolomé de las Casas, who campaigned tirelessly against the mistreatment of indigenous populations, played a significant role in shaping these laws. Las Casas argued fervently for the rights and protection of indigenous peoples, leading to significant legal reforms. In 1550, a debate took place in Valladolid, Spain, concerning the plight of the natives. This debate featured two prominent figures, Bartolomé de las Casas and Juan Ginés de Sepúlveda. De las Casas argued fervently for the humanity and rights of the Indios, while Sepúlveda contended that they were naturally inferior and could only be civilized through labor. This debate marked the first major discussion on human rights within the context of European colonialism. Ultimately, the Spanish king sided with Las Casas. For humanitarian and other reasons, the king worked to put an end to the encomienda system. But the prohibition was slow and inconsistent, allowing the system to persist well into the 18th century. Additionally, while the natives were protected, the colonists still needed labor. They quickly turned to importing slaves from Africa, setting in motion the transatlantic slave trade. The encomienda system serves as a testament to the complexities of colonial rule and the enduring impact of early policies on the development of societies. It also underscores the importance of leadership. Because absolute authority in the Spanish Empire was held by the king, the wisdom or folly of the king could steer the empire toward prosperity or decline. The portrait is of King Charles II, who became King of Spain in 1700. He was known as El Echizado, or the Bewitched, because of his physical and mental deformities, the consequence of centuries of inbreeding. We will next turn our attention to North America, but we will revisit the Spanish Empire in its twilight in a later lecture. Please proceed to answer the questions in the assignment on Canvas. If you have any questions, you can post them in the open forum discussion or contact the professor using Canvas email.